remember our next guest as an iconic TV mom from the 90s in her role as Aunt Viv on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Well, honey, you and Carlton will look out for each other, won't you? Oh, come on, absolutely, Aunt Viv. We got each other back. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. You two just be careful. There are a lot of sick, demented perverts out there. Greetings, all. <laughs> Hello, Jazz. I brought a gift for baby Dicky. <laughs> Whatever. I know it's five months late, but I wanted to find just the right thing. This is very sweet of you, Jazz. Thank you. Oh, wow. Yeah, taking us back today. She's a Renaissance woman, respected artist and designer and education activist. Please welcome Daphne Maxwell Reed. That. that never gets old for you? Oh, gosh, no. Yeah, yeah. I know. They keep even... sending the checks. <laughs> <laughs> that show will be up forever, right? I hope so. <laughs> I noticed when you were watching it, you were saying something. What that was my first show. Your very first episode? That was the first episode, and when uh, I love the way Will took it and said, when Jazz says, oh, you look different since you had that baby. And Will just looked at the camera. <laughs> and that's all that was said about it. We went on. Right, wow. right. Because it was a different actress it playing was, MVP. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. I Did you have any idea Will Smith would become what he became? Yes, because he is that smart, that talented, and that energetic. He puts 150% into everything he does. Yeah. And he's real smart. Yeah. I mean, smart, smart. Yeah, well, it's been a nice career for you, too, and very groundbreaking. Yes. You've been the yes. first woman of color to do so many different things. I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You were giving all those kudos to Will Smith, but I bet you all of those things can def definitely be said about uh, you. Well, I've, I've lived a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to show you a picture. Yes. First uh, African-American homecoming queen. Was this at Northwestern? Northwestern University. There you wow. go. This. 1967. 1967. Wow. Nobody that that is, that's hey. groundbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm old. Yeah. No, you're not. not. You no, stop you're not. saying you're that. You're polished is what you are. Yeah. And, and you've accomplished a lot in your I career. I just happen to be at a place where a lot of history was taking place. You don't intend to be the first to do something. You just do something and you happen to be the first. Mm. So I don't take any kudos in being the first. <laughs> it's the history part that makes it that right. way. Well, you were also the first woman of color to appear on the cover of Glamour magazine, and this was back in 1969. Yeah. Take a look yeah. at this. There you go. My rosy cheeks. Yeah, what does that remind you of when you see that picture? It reminds me that I used to be young. Oh, stop, <laughs> stop. I know that uh, you're being honored. It's the 50th anniversary of the takeover of the Bursar's Office at Northwestern University. That's Explain right. that to us. Back in the 60s, after King was assassinated, mm -hmm. Northwestern University didn't have a lot of black students, but they had recruited some. And then uh, we decided that we wanted to have some things at campus that were relevant to our culture. So we wanted a black history studies and we wanted a place to get together and we took over the bursar's office because that's where the only computer was back then yeah. and it was running the university <laughs> so we took over the building and how many uh, hours 38 hours we were, did a sit-in didn't it was totally um, sane we didn't destroy the building or anything peaceful. and it was very peaceful mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of our mothers were out there some of the mothers were saying if you don't get out of there but my mom said if you need bail money just give me a call mm -hmm. right. she was very supportive of you she always was. she was because she was a, also a person who was ahead of her time yeah yeah, Activist. yeah well, Activist not only did sure. you graduate from northwestern but your yes. acting career also started in chicago didn't it it did i was here many years doing modeling sears catalogs <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Victor Skrebneski, I got to do yes. some fun stuff with oh, him. Oh, yes, I was shocked by him once. That is such a treat. Ooh, honey. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good. He's famed photographer, he so yes. Good. He's so good. And I got to work with him and a lot of, um, I did, started my commercial career here as well. My first commercial was Cheer Detergent. Mm. Cheer Detergent. Cheer. I mm. think I remember Cheer Detergent. Mm. Yes, yeah. and and that's, and then Robert Conrad was coming to town and doing a, a series called The Duke. And he hired me. Uh -huh. mm. And I was on his show maybe eight times, and I said, okay, I'm going to Hollywood. Yeah, and your husband <laughs> is Hollywood too, that's, right? Yeah, that's How did I you guys meet? Oh, we met in Chicago. We worked together 
on yeah. lots of little catalogs for fly clothes, you know, the big collars and the fur and the big uh -huh. hats. And of course, we're talking about Tim Ree. You know him from Sister Sister and WKRP in Cincinnati, both Depending of those shows. Depending on how old oh, yeah. you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, Lisa loved that show. And we used to work together here, but uh, yeah, it was just another guy I worked with. <laughs> Went out to California and kind of reintroduced. Somebody said, oh, you know he's in town? I said, oh, no, say hi. And he called me, and we had a little five-minute date, uh -huh. and it lasted. Ooh, what's a five-minute date? Uh, let's have a drink. Okay, I okay. Got, I got places Val. to go. I said, okay, yeah, okay. Oh, is that what that means? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say that? Nothing. I'm a, I'm a curious mind. i got to find That's out what right. a five-minute date is. I had a, had a drink, it, yeah. You had a drink, and it lasted five hours, and now it's lasted 38 years. Wow. Hollywood, that's 174. It is, yes, it's one of the it longest is. ever in Hollywood. We just went over uh, all the Hollywood couples that have still made it. So you are in that I'm realm. I'm in there with in Denzel the, in the longest. Washington. Yes, you are. We're all, we did it before Denzel did. Yes. <laughs> Tell, tell us about these books because upstairs Val was looking at them and like fascinated. It's They're all about gorgeous. doors. Doors. I take photographs of doors all over the world because I think doors are a metaphor for life. Yes. And I encourage people to travel and to look at the details in life because the journey to where you're going is where all the richness is in life. Yeah, yeah. And look at the details. Look at the craftsmanship. Look at the color. Mm. Uh -huh. It fascinates me. And I see something even more than that. I think open that door. That's right. And go through that door. Opportunity. And yes. Adventure. Curiosity. Doors the metaphor for life. Love it. Mm. Love it. Love Live you, it. Andrew. Live Thank it. you, Daphne, for you. coming here. Thank Be you. sure My to pleasure. check out Daphne Maxwell. And she does designing, too. She designed the coat that she's wearing. We didn't even get into that. Um, make sure you check her out at DaphneMaxwellReed.com just to keep up with all of her whereabouts. Yes. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.